Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video. This time is going to be some more Mermail combos for the new post Flames of Destruction, post May 2018 ban list capabilities of how this deck can produce going first boards. Now, what I'm going to be showing you today is some more extensions upon what I showed you in the previous day's video. It's the same sort of ending board of Griffin, Firewall, Bahamut, and Toad, but it's some different ways to get to it and also some different executions of different ways the combo can be expanded upon. Now, what I like to do for these combo sequences that I show you is I like to get as much value out of as few cards as possible invested in terms of cards played from hand. That's why I show a lot of two and three card combos and don't really expand upon them that much, even though the expanding factors could be things that you play a lot of copies of, like nimble cards, swap frogs, stuff like that, or other cards in different decks. But these combos that I'm going to show you are things that are very easily expandable by other factors that might be in your hand alongside the starting cards. And if structured correctly, you could easily expand upon these plays further than I show you by doing things like making more copies of Totally Awesome with the Frog Engine or linking up into more cards through the Nimbles. As long as you hit specific points of the combo sequence correctly in terms of when you're able to drop Mulin, when you're making your Tomahawk, how you're structuring the value of the monsters on your board, a lot of things are pretty much expandable indefinitely depending on what your resources are. So while I understand the combos can go further if you include Nimble monsters or can go further if you include these, I'm trying to show you exactly what you should be looking at as far as a bare minimum of what you can expect to do with very simple, very low impact, low investment uh, sort of investments into the play. And so what I'm going to be showing you today is some modifications to the video that I made yesterday, which was the Griffin, Firewall, Bahamut, Toad, and Moulin Glace combo using Neptibus plus Teus plus a third card. Basically, off the new Forbidden Limited list, we have a third copy of Atlantean Dragoons at our disposal. And so, you may think that Dragoons is not as good to open as Neptibus in terms of how these combos get structured. But actually, it's just a little bit better in most cases, and it's definitely as good as Neptibus. So, this deck actually has a lot of ways that it can actually play with more varied hands now. Because in the previous formats with two Dragoons, if you opened like Dragoons Teus, it was a lot harder to do those kinds of plays and structure them around because of the fact that Neptibus wasn't triggering two Dragoons. You'd have to use a Dragoons to get Neptibus, and then it would send Dragoons and add like a heavy infantry or something, and that was not as ideal as what we can do now. So what I'm going to be showing you is a variation of the video that I made yesterday, and it was just going to be too long if I included this stuff in yesterday's video, but I'm going to be showing you the openings involving Dragoons and Teus and what they end up yielding in terms of identical boards and in sometimes better sequencing. I'll definitely be showing you that in the expanded form of the combo I'm going to show you after this first original one. But So the previous combo, what this is going to be uh, mimicking is the Neptibus plus Teus plus any water monster combo, the first combo from yesterday's video. But with Dragoon's Teus, it's actually only a two card combo. It doesn't even require another water monster in hand. So this is actually better than opening Neptibus plus Teus because you hit the same kind of numbers without requiring any extra influence from extra cards in hand. So basically you start this combo out as you would expect by discarding Dragoons for Teus, triggering both, and off Teus you're going to search Gund, and off of the Dragoons you are going to search for your Neptibus. And then you're going to summon the Neptibus, and you are going to send the Dragoons and add the Dragoons. Having three Dragoons in your deck is a very good feeling, uh, especially with Neptibus. Like, we've never had Neptibus plus three Dragoons before now. Uh, but so off of this first Dragoons trigger, you're going to add the Megalo. And so you've got the Gund plus the Dragoons in hand, and you've got the Megalo. But first, you're going to make Underclock Taker with the Teus and the Neptibus. And then from here, you're going to activate the Megalo, discarding Gund and Dragoons, summoning Megalo, and then your Dragoons is going to trigger, and your Gund is going to trigger, and then your Megalo is going to trigger as well. And the Gund is going to bring back Teus, and the Dragoons is going to search for Moulin Glace, because at this point, we're at the same number of waters that we had in the previous combo, where we have five waters in Grave. Um, we didn't require another monster in hand, to make any of the plays possible because of Dragoons automatically getting that first search for Neptibus and making the hand a bit better. But so you get Moulin Glace here, and we are going to be skipping our next battle phase with this combo sequence, but I'm going to show you an expanded combo sequence where it's a lot more lenient than the previous video as well in terms of what you need, uh, and then we'll be, uh, we'll be able to keep the Moulin Glace in that combo, even though we drop it really early. Uh, but so you discard two off of the Moulin Glace, and then from here, you're going to make Decode Talker with the Moulin Glace and the Underclock Taker, just so that you can get full value out of your Tomahawk. Summoning four tokens is definitely better than summoning three, especially considering that you got rid of the Moulin Glace to make this worth three monsters, rather than the Underclock that was only worth two, to step up into Firewall. 
So, things to consider. But So this combo should look pretty standardized at this point, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm just going to perform it as fast as I can, essentially. But so you're going to go into your proxy dragon uh, with these two. You're going to go into firewall dragon, if I can actually click the proper button, with deco talker and the tomahawk. And then you are going to make a link spider above the firewall. Then you're going to trigger the firewall's effect to bounce the two dragoons, or two of the dragoonses, to your hand. And then from here, you're just going to be able to do a few things that you want to do. So you can make Troymare Phoenix, or Nightmare Phoenix rather. Firewall will trigger, specialing the dragoons. And then you're able to make the two Link 2s you have into Nightmare Griffin, which will trigger Firewall yet again, special summoning the dragoons. A lot of these combos get very cookie cutter at the point where like you, you establish very key points that you should be hitting. And you should be hitting those in every combo sequence that you do, regardless of how you start your play structuring around. There's a lot of things that you can like tunnel vision your mind into. Um, there's a lot of different combos that are out there in terms of what you could do with like uh, Lacunga, uh, a few different things as far as what you can do with uh, with cards we don't have yet, um, as far as uh, as far as like Needle Fiber, Summon Sorcerers, and stuff like that. But as far as with what we have right now, I feel like this is like the better board to be doing. There are a lot of people that are doing extra link boards that end on just Trigate but no griffin. I feel like this has the most mileage to it because you still have Totally Awesome, which is essentially the same thing as Trigate Wizard in terms of what it's doing. It's negating a card, and then it takes the card as well. And you have griffin, where in a lot of the extra link combos, unless your hand was amazing, you don't have griffin. Um, so, like, there's just things to consider there. But So you have the Sphere plus the Toad plus the Muhammad. You have the exact same thing that we have had in the previous combo sequence. Um, and so basically your opponent's down two cards, they're drawing to four, Toad can negate something. You have the same Abyss Sphere into Pike or Turge play with the Heavy Inventory already in your hand, ready to go. Um, and while you don't get a battle phase next turn, your opponent is going to struggle to play through Griffin. And if they don't clear your board, or if they get your Toad off the field, or even if they don't, you have an open slot to go Bahamut Shark into another copy of Toad. So even though they're drawing another card for turn, that's another negation they have to play through. Um, if they don't force your sphere, you just keep that disruption option as long as you can. And then by the time that you have game, then you... Well, a battle phase. You'll have game, essentially. You have game on board, technically, right now, but you just don't have a battle phase for this turn or your next turn because you linked away with Moon Glacier. But by the time you have a battle phase, your opponent should still not have been able to establish plays because of the fact that you've got Toad, plus another Toad that comes out for free if they leave Bahamut Shark. You've got the Abyss Sphere that summons Pike, which sends infantry which pops a card which means whatever card they try to invest into plays to make you know their play around griffin is uh completely moot in terms of a point but all that sort of stuff but so now i'm going to show you a different combo that is a lot more expandable with taeus dragoons it literally is like taeus dragoons plus neptabyss megalo mulin glace aqua spirit like literally there's so many other cards that you play three ofs and one of in terms of like in terms of cards in your deck that are possible cards you could draw into to make the play expandable. There's way too many of them in terms of uh, in terms of like you should be seeing these cards. But so let me reset this and I'll show you what I mean shortly. All right. So now what I'm going to show you is the expanded form of the combo is a three card combo that involves dragoons plus Teus and then a third card. And now this third card is actually much more variable than what the previous combo I showed you in yesterday's video was. That one was Neptibus plus Teus plus Aqua Spirit. This one is far more expandable in terms of what you're capable of hitting to make it possible. It could be another copy of Teus, it could be Megalo, it could be another Neptibus in your hand, or just a Neptibus in your hand. It could be Aqua Spirit, uh, it could be a Revival card, uh, you could open with Diva and make it possible um, instead of uh, having to get uh, Neptibus off your Dragoons. Like, there's multiple different vari variations and variables, basically. Um, I'll do my best to discuss what changes in terms of what you search based off what you had in terms of getting to the same common points as we go. Uh, but basically how this combo is going to be different from the previous one is that we're going to drop Moulin Glace early before we do our Tomahawk play, but we are not going to get rid of it and we're still going to end in the same field of Firewall plus Griffin uh, plus all that. So we're using Megalo here as the third card, but it could literally be Neptibus, another copy of Teus, all this sort of stuff. Very, very expandable. But so you're going to do Teus, discarding Dragoons again. And this time off the Dragoons, you're going to search for Deep Sea Diva. It's actually pretty important that you get Diva. So you get Gunned and Diva off of this. And then from here, you're going to Normal Summon Diva. Hope you don't get Ash Blossomed. And then use it to summon Neptibus from deck. And so now from here, Neptibus is going to activate, sending Dragoons, and then adding Dragoons. And now this Dragoons trigger right here. 
depending on what you have in your hand. If you had Megalo, you're going to add Neptibus. If you had another copy of Neptibus in your hand, then you're going to add Megalo. Basically, add either Megalo or Neptibus. Whichever one you do not have a copy of, add that one. Should be pretty straightforward. So now from here, we're going to go into Underclock Taker with the Teus and the Neptibus. And then we're going to trigger the Megalo out of our hand, discarding the Dragoons and the Gund. So we want to trigger this Dragoon search, trigger the Gund, and trigger the Megalo. The Megalo will get us our Sphere. The Gund will bring back Teus. And then Dragoons is going to get our Mulan Glaze after this all resolves. So we're going to grab Mulan Glaze at this point. Mulan, there you are. And so now at this point, we have five waters engraved. So we can go ahead and drop this Mulan Glaze right here. Mulan Glacia. Discard two cards out of our opponent's hand. And then from here, we get to go into Decode Talker with the Diva and the Underclock Taker. And then we get to go into the Tomahawk with the Teus and the Megalo. So we're not getting rid of this Mulan Glace. We're going to do our entire combo sequence around it being there, but still end on the same number of monsters and the same constructed board. So we're going to get our tokens, our Tomahawk tokens. And so we're going to make two of the tokens into Proxy Dragon. We're going to make these two into Proxy Dragon. You want to make sure this zone's kind of open so you keep the token freely. Uh, that is something important you want to make sure you register, is then to make these two into Firewall Dragon here. And then you have that token left over that's off out of the way, which you can make into Link Spider above the Firewall. And now from here is where things are going to be a bit different. In the previous combos, we would use the Firewall to just add two Dragoons to our hand from Grave. That's actually not necessary for this one. We've got this Neptibus here, which we want to trigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a Dragoons from Grave, and we're going to add the Teus from Grave. Because we want to keep this. We don't want to link this away into Griffin. Right now we've only got to link three in terms of what these are doing. So this would be four. We don't want that. So we're just going to make this into a different structure. So what we're going to do is that we're going to add the Dragoons back, add the Teus back, and then we can use Teus discarding this to get the Dragoons back from Grave off the Neptibus special. So that's the important thing. You activate the Teus, discarding uh, the Neptibus, summon Teus over here. Neptibus will trigger, bringing back a Dragoons. And then from here... All you have to do is trigger Firewall Dragon once, so you don't have to make a Link 3 or anything in between. You could literally just go straight for the Griffin here. So you go with these four, or these three, that are worth four materials into Griffin, and then Firewall Dragon triggers, specialing the Dragoons out of hand, and then the extra monster zone is vacated so we can put the Bahamut Shark up there like we like to do, and then we get to detach the Dragoons off Bahamut Shark and summon the Totally Awesome next to Firewall. Now why do I summon Totally Awesome next to Firewall? Because if your opponent has a kaiju of some sort, they can't just kaiju the um, like the griffin and then deal with both the floodgate um, and like also make it weird for your play structuring. Whereas if they um, it forces them to either like kaiju like the griffin, and then I still have this toad that I can use to add something back in special. Or if they kaiju this, then like the griffin is still alive and there's nothing really problematic in terms of placing. It's a very it's a very weird thing to talk about, but it's still something that's possible. But so what we have is that we now have the exact same ending board, but we triggered it in a slightly different way that allowed us to conserve a card in our extra deck because of the Teus discarding uh, Neptibus, not needing us to trigger Firewall to special from hand twice. And then we have access to the same ending board. Now, we dropped this Mulan Glace very early in the combo sequence, but because we dropped it very early, we had to work around it. So we got to keep our battle phase for the next turn, which we did keep. And we still have this zone open next to Griffin, which means that whatever we summon off of this Abyss Sphere is going to be completely, like, available to, um, if I can think correctly, it's going to be completely available for that Pike or that Turge to activate its effect. Even though it will be negated by Abyss Sphere, it can be activated to discard the Heavy Infantry to Grave to pop whatever card they're trying to use. Usually a Link monster that they're trying to use to get Link Arrow Zones for Griffin to no longer apply to their monsters. So... That's that. That's basically what I wanted to show you, is that this combo, specifically, Dragoons plus Teus, is actually just super expandable. Like I said, the third card you can add to it could be Monster Reborn, like Abyss, uh, or uh, Aqua Spirit, a second copy of Neptibus, a copy of Teus, another copy of Teus, Megalo, like all of these different things are actually possible. Like you could draw the Mulan Glace, and it's also possible because you again get to drop it early and then just do the Diva play off the off of the Teus and Dragoons play, and then you just get to search Megalo and Neptibus instead of having to search Mulan. It's a lot of ways to expand upon it to get it to this sort of 
what I would consider an ideal result. This is my favorite opening to do with the deck. It gives me the most mileage in terms of competitive play that I've uh, tested with. So, that is that. But basically, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As per always, like, comment, subscribe. If you're new here, consider subscribing and enabling notifications to get notified next time I make a video. If you like the content I'm doing and want to catch more of it, it'd be greatly appreciated. But other than that, as always, check out the links in the description down below to my Facebook fan page, my personal Twitch page, if you want to go follow that and get notified next time I do a live stream. And if you want to support the channel directly and be a huge part of what keeps this channel going, and the Patreon link is in the description down below as well. Everyone that's supporting, no matter how big or small, the support is greatly appreciated and you have my eternal gratitude because, like I said, it is a huge part of what keeps this channel going well into the future. And it's a big reason why I've been able to do as many daily uploads in, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sequence. As I've been able to do. But anyway, with all that said, as I've already said, thanks for watching. As always, thanks for your time, as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.